Not too many people have changed an entire industry and fewer still have done so in the notoriously competitive meat industry. But this abattoir in Clonus owes much to the work of one woman, Dr Temple Grandin, a world leader in animal behaviour, who has single-handedly changed the way animals are treated in abattoirs and feedlots around the world. Diagnosed with autism as a child, Dr Temple Grandin's life and work has been portrayed in books, documentaries and even a movie starring Claire Danes. Last April, she flew into Ireland to open a new layerage in Clonus County Monaghan, designed along her principles of stress-free animal handling. It's a far cry from when she first worked in feedlots and slaughterhouses in the US 40 years ago. When I started going to the feed yards in Arizona, uh, back in the 70s, the handling of cattle was absolutely awful, 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 awful. People were so mean to cattle. You know, they just had a mindset of handling cattle roughly. You know, I was trying to show them that if I handle them really quietly, that uh, it's going to be a lot better for the meat quality and reduce the bruising. Have some space in there so when they come around here, they go up the race. By looking at things from the animal's perspective, the young Dr. Grandin was able to develop a scientific scoring system to monitor and improve livestock handling in the American meat industry. What's made people change at home is when McDonald's and Wendy's started auditing plants and they kicked some plants off the approved supplier list for abusing cattle, uh, then uh, people got more serious about it. I also have a very simple scoring system. How many cattle fell down during howling? How many cattle did you hit with the electric goad? You know, when I started out in 1999, the McDonald's audits, they might be zapping every animal four or five times. Well, now the good plants are down to no more than 5% get, you know, moved in an electric code. But you've got to keep measuring it because it's just like traffic. If the police didn't keep measuring speed and do some speed cameras, speed would just kind of creep back up. So you've got to keep measuring. As well as developing a scoring system to measure good animal handling in meat plants, Temper Grandin designs the facility to make it easier for both animals and humans to move through it. The designs include curved solid walls, baffled gate latches to cut down noise and uniform colour and lighting to reduce stress on the cattle in the layerage. Basically, cattle have a tendency to want to go back to where they come from. So if you lay out a round crowding pen, you want to lay it out a full half circle. So as the cattle come around the bend, they think they're going back to where they come from and then they run up the single file race. It goes around, they think they're going back to where they come from and, and you've got to lay them out right. What difference does it make to the end product? Well, bruised meat has to be cut out and thrown away. Also, there's research that shows that if you poke cattle with electric goads in the last five minutes, you're going to get tougher meat. Here in ABP and Clonus, Temple Grandin system has been installed for a few months now. But has it made much of a difference? We have absolutely noticed a difference. The cattle are much calmer at all times. The handlers find the animals a lot easier to handle. They walk through the process a lot easier. There's a lot less vocalization, which obviously proves the animals are calmer. And we also have, have benefits with regard to the meat eating quality of the final product. We have gone as far as doing blood cortisol tests on the animals. And uh, it has proven that whenever they're in the layerage, that their levels are well below industry standards. How much of this focus, I suppose, on animal welfare is because it's what your customer demands? And how much of it is, I suppose, because it works more efficiently? It's obviously a healthy combination of both. I mean, the happier animals, they're calmer animals. Um, we have health and safety benefits with regard to the workers on site. Um, we have a better product at the end of it. And, um, it, you know, an animal welfare is a very major concern of the consumer in this present day. Years of research in the cattle yards, ranches and slaughterhouses of Arizona have led Dr Grandin to develop her world-renowned techniques for safely and calmly herding livestock. By systematically studying animal behaviour, Dr Grandin has devised simple principles to help farmers move their animals. By knowing the flight zone and point of balance, cattle and sheep can be driven much more easily. Cattle have a natural behaviour of turn and look at you but keep a safe distance. Now the size of that flight zone is going to be determined by how much contact they've had with people. Now the way the point of balance works is when you're behind the shoulder, they tend to move forward. And the big mistake that people make is they'll stand at the head of the animal and then take a cane and poke it on the butt and try to get it to go forward. That does not work. It's really important bringing cattle up calmly. You bring them up calmly, that solves a lot of problems up here. One of the most remarkable aspects of Temple Grandin's career and work is that she's done it despite or perhaps because of her autism.
Well, now I was three years old. I had no language whatsoever. I wasn't able to fully speak until four. You were diagnosed when you were quite young. Well, they took me into a neurologist. You got to remember this a long time ago, 1949. Nobody really knew much about autism, and so they thought I had some kind of brain damage. Uh, but fortunately, I got into a very good early educational program. I cannot emphasize enough. If you've got a two-year-old or three-year-old that's not talking, worst thing you can do is nothing. You've got to get this kid into an educational program. But there's a real wide range. And it's not a black and white dividing line between autistic and not autistic. You know, geeky and nerdy, that's just another word for a little bit, you know, kind of autistic-like. In one documentary, um, it was titled, The Woman Who Thinks Like a Cow. Is that true? Do you think like an animal? Well, the only thing that I would do to think like an animal is I don't think in words. Animals are sensory-based thinker. They think in pictures, they think in smells, they think in little sound audio clips. They do not think in words. So my thinking, since I'm a sensory-based thinker, I, is going to be more like an animal. In 2010, Temple Grandin was named by Time magazine as one of the 100 most influential people in the world. So, after a lifetime of achievement, has she any advice for parents of children with autism? Develop the kids' strengths. You know, my ability in art showed up when I was about eight years old. Build on the area of strength. And I started out, all I wanted to do was just draw endless horse heads. No, you've got to broaden that out. If you have a little eight-year-old child that's good at math, give them the, more, the harder math books. Don't make them bored doing baby math. But that kid may need some special ed in reading. That tends to be the pattern. You know, build on the area of strengths.